Hey guys, this is Troy from the do-it-yourself world. I have a uh, large package here. Well, not that large, but it's got some heft to it from Pokemon. I hope I'm saying that right. So this is a really awesome addition to the off-grid project and the do-it-yourself world. You know I love off-grid living. And this is one of the biggest things for off-grid living. That is a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour LifePo4 battery. Look at that. This battery is special in that it has low temp rating. It says low temperature charge protection. That is important. Life Pro 4's lithium batteries, generally most of them cannot handle cold temperatures. And here in northern Michigan, we definitely need something that can handle our winters. So that's very big. This is a BCI Group 24 and more it says. Um, RV, boats and homes and they have a lot of ratings compare this battery to one of these big boys now this is equivalent to about 100 amp hours this is a uh, basically a semi truck starter battery and compare the size this is convenient to carry around the yard this thing is a two-man carry I think it's like 100 120 pounds it's a behemoth and roughly about the same amp hour rating now compare these two this is rated in um, minutes reserve capacity I'm not sure it's amp hour rating but I am pretty sure this probably has more usable energy than this one and you can see the size side by side this one is way bigger and this one is incredibly heavy this has got to be like I am thinking 60 pounds this is a challenge to lug around compared to this. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna set up a emergency power supply system, a solar powered emergency power supply system with this. So basically a uh, portable solar generator, you can call it, or a portable power bank using this battery and some very simple off the shelf parts. This is gonna be very basic and simple so anybody can do it at home. First, the easiest thing you could ever do is hook up a power inverter and power a load. Like, let's say your laptop, you need to get on your laptop, you got to check emergency services on the internet, and you need to get a load powered. So, any power inverter generally has two screw on wires like these. I already have them connected, but I'll take them off just for demonstration purposes. And you just simply put the black one on the black terminal and the red wire on the red colored terminal. Screw them down tight. Make sure they're not going to touch each other. Make sure they're firm and secure. All right, and then very simply take the black terminal for the negative lead, put it on your black terminal here. It's marked black, it's painted black, and there's a minus next to it for negative. Take your red one and put it next to the red one, clip it on here, which is positive. And there's, oh, this was powered on, okay. Well, there's usually a pop anyway when you connect a power inverter to a battery, so don't worry about that, that's absolutely normal. Some will give you a big pop, the big ones, but totally normal. So this was on. The next thing is, very simply, turn on your power inverter, and now I'm gonna hook up a load. Right here I have a fan, just an AC powered fan, and I'm going to take the cord and I'm going to plug it into our power inverter, trying not to make a mess of wires on the table here. I'm just going to plug this in, make sure the fan is off, turn off your inverter, 
plug in your device that you want to run. Okay? Then you turn on your power inverter. And then you can turn on your fan. And there we have... We're powering a device off this battery. It's that easy to set up a portable power bank in your own home. That's all there is to it. Now the next step is to set up a solar charge controller. I have two of your average ones you'll find online here. Um, for this small system, anything 10, 20, 30 amps, I'll go into a lot more detail on power inverters and charge controllers in a separate video uh, one day, but right now let's just stick with the basics and cover what's most important when hooking up a solar charge controller to a battery and then a solar panel. Notice I said that in a certain order, very important, it has to be to connect your solar charge controller to the battery first and then connect your solar panels later. So I have two here, I just want to show you what a typical solar charge controller looks like and the markings on it. This one here, I don't know how well it's going to show the images, but here we have a little solar panel display image. Here is a battery with plus and minus. I hope that shows up. I can't see my display very well. And here is your load. This device will monitor the battery voltage and then disconnect your load for you. See, these are great for like um, night lighting and stuff. And this one um, has a lot more features and functions, but again, pretty much the same thing. You can see this one a lot better. There's a little symbol for solar panel. There's a little symbol for a battery and your loads. This one has multiple outputs, but again, there's your solar panel, your battery. First things first, we connect the battery. Now this one, we would connect the red to the plus and the black wire to the minus and then connect to the terminals here, but I'm not using this one right now. I'm using this one because I prefer it. And I've already prepared some wires that plug right in here to the battery. So red is always positive, black is always negative. Now we're just doing a desktop connection for demonstration purposes right now. So I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to go and hand tighten the red to the positive lead on the battery and hand tighten that terminal down right there. I'm going to take them back and put it on the negative terminal and tighten that down here. And then we have power and it's showing, should show the battery voltage here. I thought I had that set up, maybe it lost its memory. There it is. So now it shows that the battery is at 12.6. This is not correct. My other meter said it was 12.8. It was fully charged. There is always loss in your wires. So never rely on the meter that comes with these cheap solar charge controllers anyway. So that's how you connect the charge controller to the battery. Now let's connect the solar panel. I have here a folding solar panel. I chose this one because it has the output wires that I desire for this purpose. I like this. This is actually made to uh, plug right in there, so that's great. Alright, I'll be back. I have to get control of these wires. I think wires are alive. Every solar panel is going to be different. This happens to be Essene Solar. It's a company I've worked with a lot in the past. I've had this to the beach. There's a lot of sand in here. I ran my sluice box with this. This has an output plug here that plugs in right here to its little uh, control unit and in the other section the other uh, end goes into the plug marked for solar panel okay now we're indoors but for demonstration purposes we now have a fully connected solar power system so we have a solar panel connected to a solar charge controller and charging a battery well, next, we'll go ahead, leave this all connected, and we'll bring back in our power inverter and then a load, a device to be powered by the battery. And then we'll show you the whole overview here on the table. I'm going to clear off the excess stuff, and we'll be right back. Now, this is very simple. We bring the power inverter back in play here. Okay. And we just connect the minus to the minus here. 
to the black and the plus to the red and there we got that little spark again that's totally normal there's capacitors in here which will charge up and we can turn on our power and wait for that to set and then we can bring up our device that needs to be powered in an emergency situation in this case for right now a fan go ahead and plug that in turn on the fan and there we have a very simple field expedient portable solar power system for emergency backups well guys there you have the Okmo 12.8 volt 100 amp hour 1280 watt hour lithium LifePo 4 battery this does also have low temperature charge protection, which I did not get to try out in this video because we've had a sudden bit of a warmer spell, but I will be checking that out in a later video. I also am going to be putting this in my truck and experimenting with some off-grid survival type experiences out there in my truck. I have a camper shell on the truck, and I've got some other cool videos planned for this battery. But for now, that's the end of this video. Uh, check out the links down below. I'll put the links in the description and the comments below and go ahead and get yourself one. I've had this for quite a while. I've played around with it, experimented with it, and I'm very impressed with it. And that's it for today, guys. Please like this video. Subscribe if you haven't. Talk to you all later.